And now let's give an ear to hear a word from God, reading from Matthew's Gospel. It is chapter 13, verses 44 through 46, which you could follow on page 1041, 101041. Matthew 13, 44. <coughs> hear this. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hid in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. This is the word of the Lord. You know, frequently with me when I approach a text, there is oftentimes a phrase, a word, an idea in it that kind of leaps out at me, and one such was this one. And that phrase was, a treasure hid in a field. In a field. And as my thoughts began to roam, you know, I recognized that we are living in a treasured world and always crossing over into treasures unexpected and sometimes expected. But let me ask you this about the treasures of yesterday. Take a few moments for a couple of thoughts. In thinking back over family, friends, playmates, buddies, teachers, do some sort of come immediately to the surface and you remember them so fondly, so gladly, for whatever reason you know for me, think about the church in which I grew up, my church family, my pastor. I'll tell you honestly, they're the reason I am who I am today. They set the course my whole career. But all of us, we haven't a notion, really, of how much sacrifice and devotion has gone into who we are. We only know that we've come a long journey from somewhere cradle to here. And along that path, there have been folks, some we remember, some we've even forgot. And yet, they are absolutely the making of who we are. Remembered or not, they have made us who we are from the family, from friends, from the whole realm in which we have lived and moved and had our being until now. And when we think about them, surely there is some gratitude. You know, I remember a lady, sadly, but her husband had a, an unexpected, sudden, fatal heart attack, and it was so instant. She never got over it for the rest of her life and what it was. It wasn't just the loss. But she burdened herself with the regret she never let him know how much he meant to her. And now she's discovering how much she misses him. You know, there is the poem, Maud Mueller, in which there's this couplet. Uh, the saddest words of tongue and pen are these. It might have been. Well, I've got a suggestion for that. I think the very saddest words are, it is, and we don't recognize it. It's a shame if we can only resurrect our joys in retrospect, when we've lived in the middle of them. I think, you know, there may be some difficulties along the way, there may be a rot or two in your record, but basically we all have an avalanche of good people that we are the better for having known them and they having been in our pilgrimage. And it wouldn't take a lot of thinking to go back 
to recall, to remember. And out of that emerges one of the most wondrous of human gifts, appreciation. There is no greater happiness than to realize how much we appreciate. Yeah, treasures hid in a field. There have been treasures hid in our field from birth. Some of them we noted as we passed, and some we skipped over. But they were there. And, even more so, but the memory is much fresher. There are treasures in our field of today. Take a moment. Do you think of anybody whose company you enjoy? Who you really like to be around? Anyone that you would miss terribly if they weren't? That's a treasure that's come our way just now. And in fact, if you can't resurrect them in your own biography, we've got some that we all have in abundance and they're together. You know, this land in which we live, there are people in this world who would crave the kind of freedom and privilege that we take for granted daily. And apart from that, there is the world in which we are. The world. You know, I remember an autumn of long ago when one of those moments when the earth sort of came afire with brilliant orange, red, yellow, and really I thought of and wanted to recite, there's a line from Edna St. Vincent Millay, oh God, you've made the world too beautiful this year. Surely somewhere along our way, we've had those moments about the world in which we are and which we appreciate. You know, even on a day that the, the sun is bright, the clouds are so billowing, and we're feeling so good that you almost want to sing with Louis Armstrong, what a wonderful world. Those, my friend, are daily constant treasures that have polluted our lives from the beginning till now. And you know, if it's been that good this far, do we have a single doubt that tomorrow will be treasure-ridden and glorious? Yeah, but that parable when I read it, I admit, it jumped out at me, just that phrase, treasure hid in the field. And I thought of all our fields, yesterday, the field of today, and realized, if we would but think, we are treasure-ridden, my friend. But then I'm aware that Jesus really told the parable about the kingdom of heaven being the treasure. Well, now, what is the kingdom of heaven? It's not a political entity. It's a realm of relations and the basic law is to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and your neighbor is yourself. That, my friend, is heaven. And I think the more we realize the world in which we are, the wonder and the beauty of it, the glorious gift that it is, the more we realize the measure of God's love and surely out of our appreciation that love abounds. And as we think back over life's story, I suspect the people we most remember as blessings are people. Not things, but people. 
And that'll make it far easier for us to love our neighbor when we realize how much so many of them have given to us and been to us. So my friends, in the field of your life, mind the treasures for the gift of appreciation. It will lift you up to the awareness of how honestly and truly we're blessed and how great our God is. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, friends, let's stand and recite what it is we believe today using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sakes, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.